Hello friends, myself Dr. Sarthak Mohanty and today in this video we will discuss about the largest cranial nerve of our body, the trigeminal nerve. So this nerve arises from two roots, a sensor root and a motor root. The sensor root forms the trigeminal ganglion. It arises from three nuclei, mesencephalic nucleus, main sensory nucleus and the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So these three fibers from these three nuclei form the trigeminal ganglion. So this hole is sensory, entirely sensory. And the motor nucleus lies somewhere here, not shown in this picture. Uh, here it is shown. So this is the motor nucleus. These three are the sensory nuclei. Mesencephalic nucleus, main sensory nucleus and the spinal nucleus. So fibers from these three nuclei relay in this trigeminal ganglion motor nuclei just pass through it, does not relay in it. Now this is how it is formed. This is the trigeminal nerve nuclei in the pons and this is the trigeminal nerve root and here is the trigeminal ganglion or the gasserian ganglion and then it divides into an ophthalmic branch, a maxillary branch and a mandibular branch. Now this trigeminal ganglion is placed in a cave-like depression called the cavum trigeminal. Now from here arises the ophthalmic branch which leaves the cranial cavity via the superior orbital fissure, this one. The maxillary branch which leaves the cranial cavity via the foramen rotundum from here. And the mandibular branch which leaves the cranial cavity via the foramen ovale. So the ophthalmic branch, it emerges from the trigeminal ganglion. This is the trigeminal ganglion in the cavum trigeminal this is the ophthalmic branch. So it emerges from the ganglion, passes through lateral wall of cavernous sinus. Over here is the cavernous sinus, not seen here. We can see in this diagram. Here lies the ophthalmic nerve, this one. Oculomotor, trochlear, ophthalmic and maxillary. Oculomotor, trochlear, ophthalmic, maxillary. The lateral wall of cavernous sinus. And then it enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Just before its entry, it divides into a frontal branch, lacrimal branch and a nasociliary branch. So here it divides. This is the superior orbital fissure. It enters, divides and this is the frontal nerve, the largest branch. So it passes forwards in between the roof of orbit and the levator palpebris superioris muscle. In this picture we can see, this is the levator palpebris superioris. This is the orbital roof. The frontal nerve passes in between the muscle and the roof of orbit. And it divides into a supratrochlear and supraorbital nerves. Here it divides the frontal branch into a supratrochlear medially, this one, and a supraorbital bit laterally. So next is lacrimal nerve. The smallest branch, it passes forwards over here, this one and supplies the, the lacrimal gland. Now what is this? This is a communicating branch from the zygomaticotemporal nerve which is a branch of zygomatic nerve and which in turn is a branch of maxillary nerve. So this conveys the postganglionic secretomotor fibers to the lacrimal gland. So it supplies the lacrimal gland. So here in this picture we see this is the maxillary nerve, this is the its branch zygomatic nerve, it divides into a zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal and here is the communication between zygomaticotemporal and the lacrimal nerve, conveying the postganglionic fibers from the pterygopalatine ganglion. So from here it passes to the ganglionic branches, into the maxillary nerve, into the zygomatic nerve, zygomaticotemporal nerve, at the lacrimal nerve and it reaches the lacrimal apparatus. This nasociliary nerve, next branch, third branch, it enters the orbit through the common tendinous ring. The other two nerve, it, they enter the orbit uh, outside the common, common tendinous ring, but this one enters through the common tendinous ring and crosses the optic nerve and continues as the anterior ethmoidal nerve, this one here. It crosses the optic nerve above and continues here 
as the anterior, this is the anterior earth model foramen so it uh, it, uh, it uh, continues as the anterior earth model now so there are many branches over here first is the communicating branch to ciliary ganglion this one is the ciliary ganglion so here is the communicating branch to ciliary ganglion uh, I hope you can see next is long ciliary nerve this one is the long ciliary nerve below the optic nerve this one third is an infratrochlear nerve so here this one is the infratrochlear nerve this one so the supratrochlear and supraorbital these two are branches of frontal nerve and the infratrochlear branch of the nasociliary nerve together supply the sensory innervation to this part of the forehead so next branch is the posterior model nerve this one this is the anterior model nerve this is the posterior model nerve secondly we come to the maxillary nerve the second division this passes in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus this one and enters the foramen rotundum so here we see maxillary nerve uh, oculomotor, trochlear ophthalmic and maxillary so then it passes through upper part of the pterygopalatine fossa this is the pterygopalatine fossa so here is the foramen rotundum entering maxillary nerve entering through it and in the upper part of the pterygopalatine fossa and enters the orbit through the or inferior orbital fissure as the inferior orbital nerve this is the inferior orbital fissure here it enters the orbit and passes as continues as the infraorbital nerve but then it passes through the infraorbital canal in the orbital floor this is the infraorbital canal it passes in the orbital floor and appears in phase through the infraorbital foramen this one so you can see this picture it passes uh, below this bone in the infraorbital canal and appears here over here in from the infraorbital foramen so here is another picture this is the maxillary nerve foramen rotundum infraorbital fissure and this is the um, orbital floor this is the infraorbital canal and this is the infraorbital foramen